<laughs> it's saying we're live. Hurrah, you are live. Hello, everyone. My name is Helena, and I'm with the wonderful Dee Woodward. Um, Kelly, as you might well, uh, we'll speak to Dee in a moment, but Kelly, uh, my counterpart, for those of you who don't know, um, is, is, is the other half of Speaker Insight, where we help speakers, authors, and coaches to really build a portfolio business on your terms. And part of that is sometimes interviewing amazing humans like Dee, uh, who I'm going to introduce you to you in a moment but uh, for now let me tell you that uh, Kelly's got a little bit of a headache and I made her made her stay at home today so um, so you get D and I together uh, we've got a little bit of love coming at us uh, whilst this is going on I'm going to ask you all to pop your um, buzz in your business you know the the things that are exciting the fun the the intriguing the things that you're enjoying that you've got coming up whilst I share this out into the connection hub which is um our brilliant group of nearly 7,000 speakers, authors, and coaches where you might want to just go and hang out. So um, so do tell us the buzz in your business because the buzz in our business is most definitely that uh, Kelly and I last week actually ran, and so, so I'm asking for your assistance here on this one too. Um, we ran a fabulous client day last week and obviously on the back of us building a tribe in the way that we have that's really successful and very engaged, somebody was basically saying, help me build one of those too. So um, if you would like this, and if you're doing a hashtag replay, I still want to know. So can you pop a yes for me in the comments uh, if you would like us to turn that into a program? Because at the end of it, we thought we could turn this into a program and really help people. So if you like the idea of that, please pop a yes below. And in the meanwhile, I am just going to share these out uh, in here. Dee, what's the buzz in your business whilst everybody's kind of <laughs> Typing that out. I was trying to type yes into the live comments as well, but they wouldn't let me type in the comments. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm um, glad. Yeah. <laughs> I could be in there having chatting away. That's great. <laughs> oh, it's a buzz in my business. Wow. Um, we were just talking about this briefly before we came online, but um, we've just come out of the back end of running a bit of an impromptu kind of free group program called Brand Together. Um, and yeah. that actually was inspired by yourself wasn't yeah, it it was <laughs> you came and asked me to do a presentation in the bizmosis group about the power of brand marketing and then uh, somebody else asked me to do a presentation about clarity and confidence in your brand and I suddenly realized there's a lot of people wanting to really connect to their brands again to re-explore what their brand means sure. and so we decided rather than just putting out these different presentations in, in different places let's bring it all together and I hosted a almost two week long brand together kind of community where we went through four program uh, training kind of modules that have turned yeah. into be almost a little mini brand program on their own but it was all free and then we had a nice community kind of there for me to be able to answer any questions about your brand and it was such a fun way to work together brand together as what yeah. the name was <laughs> to kind of is that a, is that a does what it says on the tin job yeah <laughs> it was one of those moments of genius and I thought that name like, works for this hang on a minute we can actually do this now yeah. Kelly if you are listening darling uh, for some reason this does not want me to uh, to share this into the connection hub so I'm gonna have one more go but I'm just letting you know but honestly when Dee and I did the interview that we did whatever it was six weeks ago or so mm -hmm. it literally was just one of those beautiful ideas and I say this to everybody and by the way thank you for all of your yeses I really appreciate that uh, Kelly we might have to get busy um, so Kelly is joining us but she'll just kind of type away every now and then sort of a bit like I did a couple of weeks ago but one of the great things about this is is that you know sometimes an idea happens that becomes an opportunity if you turn it into that that then actually gets a little life of its own and sometimes you just have to follow that energy don't you absolutely yeah the best ideas come from just having those conversations and listening to where people perhaps are not necessarily struggling, but where people's minds are wandering. And that I think is a real part of the power of creating a brand as well, is using your intuitive kind of senses when you have conversations with real people. Because For one sure. of my favorite sayings at the moment, it's all human to human. We're not business to business or business to consumer at the moment, it's human to human. And that's what your that's brand it. really should be focused on. So listen yeah. to what's going on. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what we want, which is good. So you might hear yourself for one moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, there we go. Good. Uh, just because I want to I want to be able to see everybody's comments live and good. 
here we go. I love all the technical stuff at the beginning of there these things. It's always fun. <laughs> here we go. So, uh, you know, one of the, so let me let you introduce yourself. Why don't we do this? So I've known Dee for a very long time. And uh, obviously, Kelly and I really appreciate like-minded, like-valued people that we love to put in front of you. And um, Dee is definitely a person like that. If you are in the Connection Hub, you'll have seen some of her comments that kind of come mm -hmm. through. But why don't you tell everybody who you are and how you became a branding expert? <laughs> wow. How long have we got? I mean, really, how much? Ages, <laughs> ages. It's just ages. Well, it all started back when I was, well, four years old. No, and uh, to be fair, that is a really good starting point for the story because I've always, I've just always been inspired and loved design and the power of design, especially. And then that led me into the brand inside of things because I'm really all about visual design first. I trained as a graphic designer and going back to my kind of toddler self, my favorite thing to do was to go and grab, you know, those like little play scissors and I'd cut out, um, pictures from magazines usually they were Disney holiday brochures because uh, I think that's what I was trying to really get my parents to do for me at that age um, and then I would lay them all out and create my own kind of like mini brochures for things that was what I thought was fun that was my fun thing to do as a as a small child so oh I think I always planned to be on the rude road the road to being a designer in that sense and then when I uh, studied graphic design I did all these things um, I got frustrated by the idea that design was an art. It all had to be mm. art. And yes, it's artistic. And yes, the creative kind of process, there's so many overlaps there. But to me, the power of design was really looking at it from a commercial perspective. And right. so that's where I've kind of got this name of being like the unicorn of the branding and design world. Because yes, I'm a designer. And so a visual design I really get and understand and appreciate the power of good visuals in your brand but mm. from a strategy perspective your design isn't just about what looks good it's about what really works for your you for your business um for what your goals are and so you really have to understand that internal level of your brand before you can get into the fun external side of things beautiful but yeah, Beautiful. that's what I love. I love chose I chose branding as my kind of like niche when I was told that when you went into this business world, when I set my business up 10 years ago this uh, month, actually, 10 years. Uh, oh, yeah, congratulations. Up, I know, 10 year anniversary. Crazy. It's, it's flown by. And I know I do not look at all old enough to have a business of 10 years. Anymore. You see, you were taking the words right out of my mouth then. <laughs> right out of my mouth. That's all I can say. It, it, it is absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? How the history that we have actively mm -hmm. kind of pulls us in that direction. But I love the approach that you have to it, partly because you hold a space for everybody else's creativity. Because, of course, what you do is co creation more than anything else right absolutely absolutely yes and I really kind of feel that when I work with people and their brands it's a partnership I'm there to your brand exists inside you already whether you pay attention to it whether you understand what that looks like visually whether you understand the power that it has and the way that you are able to connect who you are to your perfect customers yeah. because your brand is really the bridge between who you are and who your perfect customers are. Whether you pay attention to that or not, it is existing inside you already. And um, my job is to really kind of help you see that and help you translate that into something that everybody else can see as well. Because you've already got this vision for your business. Most people have this big vision for their business. And yet the visuals tend to be the stumbling part. So that's where I love connecting the, the whole process together, the brand strategy and the visual design side of things. Ah, OK, good. So in that case, so let me throw this one at you, because I think this is one of the things that we get, you know, sort of we get asked uh, about quite a lot. And and I think that people get confused about. So mm -hmm. so in your opinion, what are the assets and the elements that make up a brand as you're talking about it? OK, well, the short answer. Everything. <laughs> everything everything is your brand and um I know that's a really irritating answer because it would be nice to have a big long checklist and to be honest I have got a big long checklist of um, brand assets and touch points so if you want me to 
get a copy of that PDF over to you. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, I'll ping that over because there's like hundreds and hundreds of assets. So I'll yeah. get that so you can share it with everyone. Um, well, so, so you know what, Dee, right at the end of this, just pop it in the thread here because I'm people perfect. watch these ages and ages kind of later. So, you know, I'm sure that will be appreciated. I think probably yeah. a couple of thumbs up will happen in the in the thread even now that go, yes, please, yeah. I'll take yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> but that kind of like having that checklist in your hand comes with a big caveat though as well because, yes, there are so many elements that go into your brand and there's so many assets of your brand but which ones are important to you will depend on you and your business goals and your strategy so mm. really when it comes to kind of getting started and what deciding what assets are going to be the most valuable to you in your brand yeah. I can't answer that without knowing who you are who your perfect customers are, how you want to show up in the world, how your customers want you to show up in the world. And then you can kind of cherry pick what is going to be the most valuable assets for you. And yes, okay, we're obviously, we're in the, the speaker realm here. So you can categorize that and say, okay, so it's more likely that some certain assets are going to be more powerful to you. But even within that, we can kind of, you're going to be connecting smaller pieces of the puzzle together, depending on your own personal presentation of the way you want your business to connect with those perfect customers because it's not a kind of one and done checklist of okay so you're a speaker so you have to have this and this and this mm. yes there's bits like that out there but really you've got to connect to the bigger picture of what you want to create with your brand what you yeah. want to be known for and who those perfect customers are and what they want to see from you and then you can start to choose from that massive list of kind of assets that you might need <laughs> and and putting you on the spot a little bit working with those speakers authors and coaches bearing in mind that you know sort of they're they, they're probably as creative as you are in a slightly different way as a minimum what should they look to have well everyone these days no matter what industry you're in is gonna go to google and search your name if they're thinking about kind of working with you or they want you to come and speak on their stage you, they're gonna be looking for um what's the word i'm looking for that kind of this is the word I'm trying to find here. They're going to be looking to, you know, prove who you are. To prove, that, yes, like that <laughs> social proof, that, that, that kind of, they, they're looking to kind of bona fide verify you. Yeah, verify, basically, kind of looking for that to go that you are who you who you are. So having um, a website presence, and that doesn't have to be a full-blown website. It could just be a simple kind of showreel kind of piece, depending, again, what type of business that you want to build as a speaker or whether, you know, it could just be a page but if you're basing talks on a book or things like that it could just be a landing page with that information on um so long as there's some sort of web presence and then social media presence now whether you are linkedin or facebook or instagram doesn't really much matter um which one you choose so long as you choose the one that fits your style first of all because you know i'm very much about you know people first who you are first and then where that audience is going to be looking for you so linkedin i know would for me be a good place to be but mm -hmm. I don't like it very much <laughs> and so I don't really find myself wanting to spend time on there and so if you sure. don't enjoy you spending time somewhere then you're not going to show up as the best that you can so you want to choose the platforms that really work best for you and mm -hmm. then work best for where those perfect customers of yours are going to be hanging out um, and so those are kind of like two basic places online uh, then you want to obviously have some sort of way of keeping a conversation going with people For sure so you know you guys talk about opt-ins all the time and having kind of lead magnets and that type of thing and it doesn't again really matter much what exactly that looks like so long right. it's a way of getting people to give you <laughs> their email address so that you can have a conversation with them and that's what yeah. it's about it's about being able to continue having that conversation and build a relationship so that's what your brand is really there to do it's the okay. whole no like trust process Sure. No, it, make, it makes complete sense. It really and does. That's the job of your brand is to build the know, like and trust in you without you having to physically be there all the time. <laughs> So, so a couple of things that, that people are saying to you is the key thing. Uh, so this is Tim, um, who is a favorite lunchtime uh, learner, look at, listener. Um, mm -hmm. The key thing, is, as I think Dee was saying a minute ago, is to understand that your brand and the paraphernalia, the cards, the logos, etc., are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. All the bits are representatives of your underlying brand, yeah. which I think is, is that's why we love you so much, right? Yeah. Um, but it's the difference between your brand and your branding. That's right. Yes. 
Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> and then Renee saying, funny point about LinkedIn. It is the platform, but you're right. It can be joyless. Facebook is much more intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea Blue says, how can you draw people to you? So mm. Mm, that's a mm -hmm. nice question. So, so, so yeah, how, how can you draw people to you or how does your brand draw people through to you? Well, how do you draw people yeah. to you in real life? actually answer that and that's where I really I'm a very strong advocate of doing the you first within your brand because mm -hmm. the idea of a brand online uh, sometimes think people see it as this kind of disconnect to who they are it's this other thing it's this thing that my business kind of uh, lives in but as we we're saying it's not it's just you know we're still doing business more human to human these days so mm -hmm. how do you as a person because your brand is based on you as a person especially as a speaker and an author you know you are selling your expertise most of the time so how do you show up and connect with people in real life where do you find yourself having the conversations that attract people to want to find out more about you and, you know, that want to invite you to go for lunch and things like that and have coffee? How do you have those conversations in real life? Look at that and then look at ways that you can start to kind of multiply that on a kind of online digital scale. So yeah. if you find that you're obviously very good speaker wise you're probably very good at talking to people face to face and you have a real good way of connecting with people in person so showing up online and the best way to then really attract more people to you is to show up doing video things like this have more conversations put yourself um out there in kind of video clips talking about what it is that you're passionate about but not just kind of doing the speaker thing and presenting things you want to be opening conversations yeah. And what, what, one of the things that we consistently say, you know, sort of Kelly and I both, um, and I'll come on to a question in a, in, a, in a moment, but one of the things that we are consistently saying, and, and I know that you feel this way about putting your message into your branding, because really it's uh, so Andrea saying phone calls, networking and invites from others is how she does it. And it's like, OK, well, how do you replicate that to, to actively attract people to you? But for us, one of the key things, because we do talk about, you know, sort of our yellow dot is always you at the heart of your business. Mm -hmm. So. So we talk about those key messages coming out as part of your branding, which, of course, is what you're saying as well. It's this underlying piece, as Tim just said. Yeah. Um, so so, so I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, but because uh, I, I know you've had a whole bunch of good, juicy success, like let me throw this one at you so that you can you can kind of help people understand just how vital brand is. So so how does having a brilliant brand mm -hmm. really in help you increase your sales? because all of that kind of networking stuff, et cetera, et cetera, we're all still business owners at the end of the day. So how does having a brilliant brand actually do that? And that's where I love that when we're saying about we're kind of my starting as a design side of things and getting a little bit annoyed about people talking about the art side of stuff before because we're in this for business, we're in it for commercial gain and your brand's job is really to help you connect with more people faster, easier and to get them, you know, buying from you. <laughs> quickly <laughs> and that's where your brand has this unique ability to really shape your customer's perception of you so if you've got a tool that helps you in a not so great way to say but you know control how people think about you then mm -hmm. harnessing that and understanding how to use that to your own kind of gain yeah. is a really key part of using a brand to help you increase sales now obviously you kind of don't come with that at a caveat of you know we're not painting a picture out there it's not about kind of trying to um falsify people into thinking that you're something that you're not just to kind of get financial gain here obviously sure. I feel like I have to say that just to make sure that you know, that we're on that plane. you know we all know that that's not what we mean here it's so no. about using your brand to really connect with people quicker and faster so that they can get to feel like they've known you for 10, 20 years and they have built that no luck and trust factor in you, but they've done it in 20 seconds of just seeing you for the first time on a website or, you know, yeah. going into an email, email automated sequence or something like that. All of those tools that you use in your business, all yeah. of those branding assets that we kind of put out there, the role is to create that instant connection with you as a person in a business that gets people wanting to just mm. open their wallets and pay you straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Which, which of course, you know, sort of, and, 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 and the whole point here is, is that when we talk about that kind of you at the heart of everything, it is that 
overused word of authentic kind mm -hmm. of connection, but also that whole place around, you know, and this is one of the things that I love about our group of speakers, authors and coaches, because they are really intent on how do I serve and how do I serve the maximum mm -hmm. amount of people with the thing that I have? And we, of course, are highlighting that your brand can help you do that tremendously and mm -hmm. kind of put things in front of people. So, so, you know, sort of, yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense for people to consider mm -hmm. how they are showing up and what the assets are that are doing the speaking for them. Yeah, and it is that. It's doing the speaking for you. Your brand does that speaking for you without you having to be there. So people can like pop online and check you out in the middle of the night and feel that connection to you without you even having thought about who they are. You have no idea who they are. And yes, building your, your brand is a long time kind of strategy for yeah. building trust. But we're all in it for the long time here. I'm assuming yeah. nobody's ever a real kind of quick turn around, make a few bucks. And so people no. do buy from people they know, like and trust. And so spending that time to consider how you can amplify that no longer can trust factor within your business by focusing on how your brand communicates that quickly for you. Yeah. It's a real game changer kind of piece to put into your business. And I know most people want to jump straight into business and stuff and go to the like, yeah, I need a logo and I need a website or I want to get out there and let's just do all the fun, pretty stuff. <laughs> and there's a lot of internal work that you've got to do first, as with is everything. And I know everything. that you know that. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. always that. And that's always ongoing as well, because your brand isn't like this one and done thing, um, which is why I love teaching people through the kind of group program that I have and the way that I like to talk about branding, because I really believe that as business owners, we should understand and have the power to be able to grow and develop our brands as we grow and develop our businesses. So Beautiful. yes, it's great to be able to, it's great to be able to go and pay a designer. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't go and pay a black brand agency or a designer or anything to do that work for you. But I still think, first of all, you need to understand that process for yourself. A, so that you know what people should be doing for you, because it's you know, for sure. important. B, so that you understand and you can see when perhaps your brand isn't showing up in the way that it should be to really help you communicate your message and yeah. connect with the right people. And, and when you know the process, you can identify where you need to kind of fill holes before you end up with a really leaky bucket or whatever metaphor I'm trying to find. <laughs> I was going to say, yes, they're, they're, there's a metaphor in there somewhere. There's but, metaphor. But, you know, the, the, the thing that Kelly and I talk about already, and she's, she's tapping away, so I'll share that one in a second. But, you know, the thing that we all always suggest to speakers, authors and coaches is, you know, you have to have the foundations in place. Mm -hmm. You have to understand who you are, you know. So I like what you said about, you know, you're absolutely, your brand is developing as your business is developing, mm -hmm. but we would take it one step further, you know, with that whole, there's you and there's your business. And as you grow, the business grows. And as the business grows, you grow. Mm -hmm. So alongside of that, the brand kind of sits as one mm -hmm. of the things that also has that whole, mm -hmm. Um, I was going to make a metaphor here, but I'm so not going to use that one. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to read out Kelly's comment instead because I'm going to get rid of that from my head. And you'll just all have to be in an intrigue frame around what that was. <laughs> Kelly's actually saying um, your brand needs a strategy as much as the running of your business. And, mm -hmm. and you know, that's exactly where we're coming from. Yes. Uh, Tim's saying, good point. Going to somebody and expecting them to produce a brand for you by magic is a route to frustration. For sure. For sure. It's like, rah, yeah. why? Why don't you get what's in my head because they're not in your head because we have all <laughs> our planners have got that big make it perfect button and we just push it. that's right that's what it oh is. god <laughs> I'd, I'd love a make it perfect button but instead I'm going to ask you this question so because this is another one of those that I know that people out there you know it's kind of we're, we hope that we're re-educating the perspectives but I'm going to ask this on behalf of people who've got it in their heads are you ready okay here we go here we go <gasps> How much does color play a part in your branding? Like, do you believe that colors represent themes, industries, impressions? What should I be going for if I'm a speaker, author, coach? Mm -hmm. Tackle that one for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know already that color is one of my all-time favorite topics. So, I mean, we could actually just do this whole thing on color psychology. It's one of the things that I absolutely love to geek out on the most. And that's because it does play a huge role in your visual brand. And so we've already kind of distinguished between your brand as in, you know, understanding all the internal work that you do. And then when it comes to creating your visual brand, you're really taking all that internal work that you've done, taking all of those thoughts and feelings and all the facts that you've kind of established about who you are and who your customers are and all of that business strategy and all of that kind of good 
juicy, deep work that you've done. <laughs> then we've got to translate that into something that visually represents it. And this is the bit that's always made me chuckle a little bit because that's the bit that like instantly I just, I that's my superpower almost. I, whenever I have a conversation with somebody um, about their business, in my mind, it's already started like picking colors and styles and things like that. Because That's how I interpret things. It's why I love what I do. It's why <laughs> I am doing this job. That, that, that's um, that yeah. four-year-old kind of having yeah, developed that, into yeah. this, right? That's my fun. That's what I want to do all the time. It's just my yeah. favorite thing. Um, but I know that actually that's a very difficult process for a lot of people to understand the how that translates through into the visual side of things yeah. and it it is a science more than an art so there are lots of studies into design psychology and color theory and all of these things and again it makes a huge impact on your business when you just change colors and things I mean I've had a brilliant example where I was working with a good friend of mine years back um, and we kind of like tested because we were doing some work together and we thought you know what we're going to go through this branding process but let's just first of all try just changing the colors on your website nothing else we didn't change anything else at all it was just the colors yeah. and the transformation that we saw almost instantly in the type of customers that were contacting her and the lead kind of that were coming through the website because it was a big lead generation site mm. on her website because she was very good at all of that side of things. so it was a great kind of test to put out there just changing the color and I kind of knew that that would happen but it was really great to really see it actually in principle happen. So when you understand who you are and you understand who your perfect customers are, there will be certain colors that evoke certain feelings in people. And you may not consciously be aware of it until you know you talk about it and then you start thinking, oh yeah, of course. So there are reasons why you'll see big kind of powerful companies using red as a color mm. because it gives you that power. You also, There's a reason why most kind of corporate um, banks and businesses in that sense use blues and silvers and colors because that typically is a color of trust and there's all those kind of very you know yeah. a quick google search will give you all of that kind of color psychology yeah. but what's important to think about when you're choosing colors is first mm. of all knowing who you are and knowing who your customers are because what color means to one group of people can mean something completely different in a yeah. different group so especially over cultures and different types of things colors well, will be different things it's really interesting. So I'm so I'm just going to go through some of the comments that are coming I in. Because, well, I know, I know, and 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 I'm I'm just looking for it because I know you, and like we've we've had this conversation several times over. So so Renee started this off, and I'm sure he's probably already getting some perspectives on the back of what you've said. He started saying, "Is it as simple as suggesting extroverts should adopt reds, oranges, etc., and introverts less standout colours?" Um, mm -hmm. But 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 I'm sure that some of that has been answered around the whole actually is because because Tim's then countered with I made it purple because I like purple mm -hmm. so there's almost this whole do we do the color for them or do we do the color for us um and of course Renee's then also made the, the the point around colors have values too so mm -hmm. people need to live and breathe them and actually kind of you know is it congruent and aligned with us? So there's a whole bunch we can kind of go with there. <laughs> and that's why it's, it's, it's such a vast kind of subject and it's great. Yeah. But yes is the answer to kind of both of those things. Yes, you need to start with, it's good enough to start with colors that you love. Because actually, if you're building a brand based on you, then it's very likely that the colors that you are most attracted to are mm -hmm. the colors that are representative of your core values. Um, yeah. Because that's just the way this stuff works I don't know the actual scientific reason for it but that's you know that's just how it tends to work we love the colors that are kind of in <laughs> It, it's sorry I'm just going to interrupt it's interesting that you say that because inside Changemaker Central like inside our membership I'm actually interviewing someone who's doing color psychology and stuff like that in about an hour excellent we can follow <laughs> on and you can follow on the questions into that indeed indeed yeah. but for your from your brand colors start with what you know first which is you then yeah. you do need to look at who your perfect customers are because it may be that actually there's a better color than the one that you're most drawn to, first of all, that you still yeah. love and that's still representative of everything that you like and your values, but is going to connect better with your perfect customers. So it's finding that balance between the yeah. two. And then, of course, you've got the whole range of hues and 
shades and all sorts of kind of like texture things to get into there. And the way I always kind of exam use that as an example is when you think about kind of looking at Waitrose or Asda, they both use green, but they have very different types of green. And that's because they're aimed at different kind of target markets. One's more affluent and you'll genuinely find that most kind of people that are in an affluent market tend to go for more muted, subtle, deeper colors those kind mm. of colors whereas anything that's kind of cheap and bright and breezy and easy is usually a brighter color you know you think easy jet and it's bright vivid oranges that's what them <laughs> comes into mind and then yeah as it typically has a brighter color and then of course you look at mcdonald's as an example for that when they change their colors so that they could be seen to be more organic and you know, good for you because they changed to green. <laughs> <laughs> which, yeah, which I think we all kind of, yeah. We, oh, so Ke Kelly's Kelly's actually being very helpful. She's doing her best to be as helpful as she can by putting a couple of links in. Don't don't distract by going off to find those people. Like you can look at them afterwards. But she's doing some meanings of colours on info, infographics in all sorts of ways. Andrea is actually saying, and and so this ties in with another bit that I kind of want to really talk to you about because you mm -hmm. can imagine that D and I could go on about this. For a little while but that whole you at the heart of it really and then kind of going out from there really works Alison's actually saying that you know poor design cheapens your brand and that's absolutely mm -hmm. bang on right um, mm -hmm. and that of course it takes into that color consideration that goes in but the, the thing I want to take this into and it leads in with um, Andrea's question as well is how can the speakers, authors and coaches who are listening create that consistency across the, the different services and products? And I'm going to bring Andrea's thing in here as well. And the lead gen, that first impression piece. So how do you run your brand through that? Yeah, well, this is why I always come back with, you know, starting with you first, because that's always going to be the easiest way to create consistency. Because when you, you know, when you start with, you and then you look at how you want to be seen and then you look at how who the people are that you want to work with uh, and you start to get really clear you get some real clarity on your values and how you want to be seen and who those perfect customers are to you then showing up becomes so much easier because it's just because your brand becomes you it becomes as simple as you showing up and being consistently you and there's nothing easier than just being yourself and showing up being paid basically to be who you are naturally <laughs> and it's going to be the easiest way to continuously show up across any kind of platform wherever you need to be because you're not trying to be somebody that you're not you're not trying yeah. to think okay how do these people want to um hear from me what do they want to know you're actually thinking okay what do I want to share and it's a bit kind of goes around and about in circles because Yes, it's important to take into consideration what your customers want to hear from you. Absolutely, it is. But not to the detriment of you not showing up because you're confusing yourself. Um, it's more important to know who you are and the message that you want to share. Because when you're really clear on that, showing up consistently just becomes easy. It's so much easier when you really know what you want to say. Yeah. And, and and it's interesting because, you know, the, the, we're going back to that piece around there is your brand and then there is your branding. So mm -hmm. with all of that in mind, so if you I mean, I, I call it the stick of rock, you know, sort of Kelly and I will talk about this all the time. You know, you plant your green flag in the sand, which is another one of my metaphors, you know, around this is what my business is and does. And this is who I am within it. So that, you know, coming back to Renee's comment about values, if I, you know, broke up whatever that kind of alignment is, it doesn't matter the the words would still be the same as you run through it. And kind of that's that piece around you mm -hmm. solidly kind of in your brand. But then again, so how do you run your branding through mm -hmm. those products and services so that you're creating that bond or connection? Well, then keep start with the basics and yeah. kind of get a consistent color, um, colors and fonts and style guide together. Because when we're just talking about the power of colors, um, having that kind of consistent visual scent as they like to call it I suppose <laughs> online so when you hop hop from kind of face your Facebook profile and you go into LinkedIn or you go to Instagram or you go to your website or you go and show, show up within um, a live kind of like mm. this you still have essence and visual clues to your brand which is really annoying that I'm sat here today rather than where I usually am but the kids are in the house and I would usually <laughs> be in my kitchen when I say these things and then you would see visually behind me lots of clues about who I am and what my brand stands for so for it sure. just 
yeah, once you kind of get clear on all of the internal stuff and then you put together the external visual look of your brand, create a really simple one page guide. And I'm all for kind of a, a real basic brand guidelines document, which just has your core colors, your core message. So some of your, your verbal language as well, because that's just as important to kind of keeping consistently consistency through your brand as it is the visual side. But, you know, look at the type of images that you use and the fonts and stuff. And once you've got that real kind of basic guideline, um, it will make it easier for you to keep consistently um, the visuals across any platform that you show up on, because you'll be able to kind of do a bit of a spot check back to that yeah. one guide that you've got to say, okay, does this look like this page? If it does, great, I can continue to use it. If it doesn't, I need to rethink what I'm sharing here. Um, it's just it, that it, it, this way. And it's it, and I'm going to say hi to Sarah Ross. You've made it in, and she's sneaking in right at the end, um, which is great. And it's interesting that you say that because, of course, uh, <laughs> I'm about to say exactly what Kelly said. So I'm just going to read out what Kelly said. Uh, your branding in your home is gorgeous, Dee. For those in Changemaker Central, you can see this in the professional mm -hmm. insight we did we did with Dee on branding. You'll totally see how it pops, and you'll get even more um, uh, around it. But it's it is an interesting thing around having that one pager. And I think even for those of you who are watching at the moment, if you go and look at how am I showing up and am I being consistent in that way, it's a really good double check um, for us, you know, sort of Mel, my lovely VA, um, she absolutely flourished as soon as she had that tiny guideline that it's Sarah saying, <laughs> been distracted by birthday cake. That's me tomorrow, lovely. Um, <laughs> so happy birthday. Uh, that's really exciting. But, you know, sort of certainly when, when I was talking, um, you know, Know, to Mel about creating various things. As soon as we got that guideline in place, it just gives her the how do you need to um, how do we need to show up? Uh, oh, Eunice is popping in as well. They're all coming in at the end today. Yeah. That, that that's quite quite good fun. <laughs> um, yeah. Andrea. Um, feel free to refresh your screen. She's saying she can no longer see everybody else's comments. So just refresh your screen. I promise we won't say anything too vital in the second that you miss, uh, which is really good. And Renee, good. I'm really pleased. So uh, yeah, and you know, what, now I really want to come back and go, oh, that was amazing that you just said that so that you feel like you've missed out on something really amazing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but we won't know when it is. So don't be cheeky uh, is all I can say. And so but but this is all part of that brand. You know, this this chat, exactly mm -hmm. as Renee's just said, you know, great chat. But but this is exactly the point is how are you using you to create the connection and the feel and those people that connect to that because they're choosing. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm now giggling because they they also know us well enough. Andrea <laughs> saying, and you're generally here for at least another half hour. <laughs> <laughs> that's because there's not two for the price of one at the moment so there's only myself and d because kelly's having to type in order to actually kind of work <laughs> this uh, which is good but let me take it back back on tracks just so that we've got this um because one of the things that that whole series that you actively sort of did mm -hmm. um as a result of a conversation that we had tell us a little bit more about that because i know that people can still get hold of it and and i think with the interest that's here, I, I suspect people will really want to get in touch with you. So I'm going to put your link in, but you tell them a little bit about it. Well, yeah, as I mentioned, it was called Brand Together. And really, we covered four. It was a four part series um, with a lot of kind of communication that went in inside the group and although that group side has kind of ended the power that came from those seeing the people transformation that went through those four videos made me think okay I'm gonna keep it up for a little bit longer my intention was to put it into a paid for group so it yeah. will become a paid for product at some point but right now it just felt like this needed to stay out for a little bit longer because there's some really good stuff in there and I think it's really important especially kind of in the, the world that we're finding ourselves in right now that people yeah. are really connecting to what they stand for and actually repositioning their businesses in a way that they want to show up more as who they are in their business and yeah. the whole human to human thing that we've touched on a few times is so important right now so yes I've kept um the four-part series it's there as a binge watch it's absolutely <laughs> 
anything you could possibly watch on Netflix, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously. It's me. It's, uh, it's going across uh, the four topics are the power of brand marketing, which was the one that really started this because that was the question that you asked me to come and present to the Bizmosis team and guys with. So that really started the catalyst for creating this. But that in itself is a brilliant class that really helps you understand why you should pay attention to your brand and how you can use your brand as a marketing tool, not just as this, you know, nice to have cherry on the top piece, why it's mm. so actually really should be deep rooted in everything that you do within your business. Yeah. Uh, then we move into brand clarity and confidence because really without clarity and confidence in your brand, it can't exist. And that's such a fundamental piece of creating your brand. And through that um, class, there's just some deep diving questions, some really probing questions, ones that you most likely have heard or seen before in sure. some iteration or version of your business, but not necessarily applied it to thinking about your brand. Yeah. So that's still a really interesting one to go through. Um, the goal of that is to come out of it with some serious kind of clarity around those two big questions, you know, who you are and what you want to be known for and what your perfect customers want to see from you. Because there's a slight difference. And the difference between the answers of those two questions is really the kind of sweet spot of where your brand is born, like what your brand should look like comes from understanding those two questions. And it sounds pretty quick and simple, doesn't it? Just answer those two questions and you're done. Your brand is done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's a growth process, isn't it? Exactly. So yeah. those are the first two um, classes. And then we go into ways to launch your brand, because actually it's all fair and well, you know, putting all this work into creating a brand and you've done all the internal work. You may have done all the external work. But now what? How are you going to get it out there in front of the people that need to see it? So yeah. that takes you through different ways that you can launch your brand, show up in your brand and get it out there, make it an, an event of its own because your brand deserves the attention. Um, it deserves all of these eyes on it. So there's some kind of strategic ways that you can launch your brand to get it in front of the right people's eyes. And then we kind of summed up the four part, what I call the brand teardown, which yeah. I love keeping it just as a name like that for a while because it made people think, what, what is a brand teardown? And really it was exactly what it should sound like, was ripping apart the brand process, ripping apart your own brand, dissecting mm. it all up into uh, little pieces so that you can start to rebuild it to make it the thing that really connects who you are to your perfect customer. Yeah. So that no. is the series that it, I created, it, and I love it. It's, I'm very and, excited about it. <laughs> and, 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 and so 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 I love that you've just gone through that because, you know, sort of the, the, this is part of what Kelly and I have been teaching everybody for, for a while is that you know so much so you each, not you, D, you, D, you, you know, know so much, just. but every single person here knows so much. And it's that little piece around how can I pull those things together and actively be at the heart of it, sharing the message I want to share and actively engaging with people. So I'm, I, you know, I made you go through those just to highlight to people that actually your brand can happily run through everything because you've got that you at the heart of it um, piece that then informs every product, every lead magnet and everywhere that you show up in that way. So it isn't just about the assets. It's also about the story that sort of sits in there. So so um, if you are watching this on a replay a year down the line, it may well be that you have to just tag D in here. Um, <laughs> she is very available on Facebook, I promise. You won't find her very often on LinkedIn. She'll have a go, but really, she's here on Facebook more than anything. Um, but, but you know, tag her if you want access to it, because she may well have changed it by then. But for you, those of you who are watching at the moment and who actually want to do a little bit more of that exploration whilst we've got some space and time, for some mm -hmm. of you, certainly, some of you are really busy, um, that actually does... Um, it will help you tremendously. Uh, <laughs> Tim's saying, you know so much. Now, how do you show that to people? Uh, mm. Now, are you speaking specifically to me, specifically to Dee, or just in general? That's what I want to know. Uh, but, but, but And and Kelly's actually saying, Dee teaches how to put a brand into action. And that actually is a great description, I, I think is, um, is exactly it. 
Yeah, and action taken, like cracking on, is one of my top values. Um, <laughs> so you know that that is what I like. To do. Yeah, my yes. friend, we, 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 like a conversation, having a conversation with a friend, and then a loving kind of kick up the butt to get out there and just crack on and get it done. <laughs> yeah, that is that is exactly it. And when you know her a little bit better, that phrase changes. Just I'm like, just saying that. So, I put my best. I'm um, just. In case there's little ears watching voice on for for us here, yeah. <laughs> which which I absolutely love. So, uh, is there anything that you would one <laughs> impressed and uh, one knows so much indeed in indeed? And so it is. It's this piece. This consider this whole piece an invitation to go and take a look at. You know, I'm a big fan of step into the shoes of your avatar and actually take a look at how are you showing up in your brand and your branding mm -hmm. and. And, you know, if you kind of go, oh, actually, maybe not as well as I'd like it to, then go and have a little kind of look around and get some more ideas. Hopefully you've had some already from Dee and from the conversations that have been going on. But by all means, your brand grows with you because you can't help growing. And as speakers, authors and coaches who are impacting in the world, that's a truth that kind of is like a stick of rock, right? Yes. Um, absolutely good so in that case i'm going to say thank you thank you thank you uh thank you all for listening uh the 19 of you that are currently here and those of you who have done the replay uh and and it really kind of works maybe i'll end on this one from kelly she, do, she does like to get get a word in here so get i'll let her have the last ones how, <laughs> how about that so she says illustrate your user journey to them in your brand message tim so that they can know the extent of how you help them your wisdom and your knowledge and there we have it mm -hmm. That makes complete sense. So many thanks to you. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Uh, she says, thanks for a great session. And uh, we will see you all uh, either inside the Connection Hub for more conversations. You're welcome, mm -hmm. Sarah Heenan. Um, and or uh, we will see you next week for the next Facebook Live. Thank you, Dee. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Speak soon. Bye. <laughs>